This is John Marler. Next on Eyewitness News at 11, videotape of a downtown New Year's party that turned violent. An environmental crisis off the Moroccan coast. Maynard Jackson gets ready to return to his old office. And the latest on the search for a man and two teenagers who vanished on the Chattahoochee River. Join Brenda Wood and me for all the night's news next. Eyewitness News is next. Tonight, underage drinkers trash a downtown hotel, throwing fire extinguishers and bottles off balconies onto the crowd below. The first U.S. combat troops come home from Panama, but Noriega still refuses to come back to the U.S. with them. And find out how changes in the tax laws could cost you a bundle in the new year. Also on Eyewitness News tonight, heavy security at an annual celebration held by the NAACP after a string of mail bombs across the South. And we're going to show you a chilly way to ring in the new year. Join us for all that and much more coming up next on Eyewitness News at 11. There's no heartburn like your heartburn. And there's no leading antacid tablet like Gaviscon Extra Strength Relief Formula. The fire extinguisher. Because only this Gaviscon dispatches a unique foam barrier to smother your heartburn while acid neutralizers put out the fire. Gaviscon Extra Strength Relief Formula. The fire extinguisher. WAGA-TV, Atlanta. Brenda Wood. John Marler. Ken Cook, weather. Jeff Hollinger, sports. And the Eyewitness News team. This is Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 11. Tonight, good evening. U.S. combat troops are leaving Panama as the new Panamanian government urges Manuel Noriega to leave the Vatican Embassy in Panama City. About 300 of the 27,000 American troops are coming home tonight after the largest U.S. military action since the Vietnam War. Some of those troops have already arrived at Fort Ord, California, and Kelly Air Force Base in Texas. But the vast majority of the American soldiers is staying on in Panama with no firm date for their withdrawal. The U.S. still surrounds the Papal Nuncio, meanwhile. That is the Vatican Embassy, where Manuel Noriega has been staying since Christmas Eve. The U.S. and the Vatican have been negotiating terms under which Noriega would leave the protection of the church. But Panama's new president makes it clear he wants Noriega out. I, asked him, I, I only ask Nuncio to pull him outside the premises. Whatever happens outside the premises is another matter. Of course, I must admit to you that once he's outside the premises, he will go into the hands of the United States. The Vatican says it will make no deal to throw Noriega out without a formal indictment from the Panamanians. John? Brenda, we can report tonight that downtown's Marriott Marquis Hotel is getting back to normal after starting out 1990 with a riotous rampage. It was about midnight when a huge crowd celebrating New Year's Eve trashed the hotel. And one of those at the party captured some of the action on home video. Channel 5's Doug Richards reports on that wild party and its ugly aftermath. At first, it had appeared to be merely another exuberant New Year's Eve at a downtown hotel. Total chaos. Total chaos after midnight. Once it became 1990, it seemed like everybody got out of control. The atrium of the hotel rained with debris thrown by partygoers. Down below, guests had to scurry undercover to avoid it. Every time you turned around, somebody was doing something. You know, you'd walking around down the lower level, and bottles would be coming off the top and landing all over the place. There's glass all over the place. This was a fire extinguisher somebody threw. And this is a view from above some glass tables. The thrown objects tore holes through their tops. I hid in the room. I was scared. <laughs> Here on the upper stories of the Marriott Marquis outside the guest rooms, the balconies are full of these removable flower pots. And witnesses say these weren't the only things to go hurtling down the 40-plus story atrium here inside the hotel. Witnesses saw beer bottles, pieces of furniture, even a vacuum cleaner fall to the lobby below. Somebody could have gotten killed, actually, if a beer bottle uh, hit him in the head from the 37th floor. As it was, at least 15 people were injured. Another 50 were arrested for fighting, destroying property, reckless conduct. 
if we wanted to, and if we could have arrested hundreds of people merely for the charge of uh, minor in possession of alcohol. Sergeant Lynn estimates at least half of those drinking at the Marriott last night were underage. The hotel says they brought in the booze from outside. You're talking about kids 15, 14 years old right. walking around with a gal gallon jug of vodka. You know, come on. The cleanup began in earnest almost immediately. The hotel hopes to sweep away the memory, too, of its not-so-happy New Year party. New Year, Atlanta. Doug Richards, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Getting things under control there was not easy. It took 50 Atlanta police officers to finally control the chaos at the Marriott last night. President Bush and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev exchanged messages of peace as this new year got underway. George Bush, in his televised New Year's greeting to the Soviet people, said it is time to look past nine decades of war and suspicion and time to look toward peace and freedom. But with goodwill and determination on both sides, I am confident our two peoples will be equal to the task. From the Kremlin, Gorbachev, too, called for efforts to bring a century of peace. 1990 can and should bring us closer to a period of genuine peace in world history. That exchange of televised New Year's greetings continues a tradition that started during the presidency of Ronald Reagan. In the divided city of Berlin, New Year's Day 1990 brings East and West together in a wild celebration billed as the world's largest party. West German television showed this scene live as hundreds of Germans climbed on top of both the wall in West Berlin and on the Brandenburg Gate in East Berlin. Free passage from one side of Berlin to the other is now allowed for Germans for the first time since 1961. That was when the wall was built. Brenda? New Year's Day in Czechoslovakia was greeted with a more sobering look to the future. Hope in a climate of economic shambles. The country's new president, Václav Havel, in a televised address told the nation, nation that the economy is outdated and workers exploited. He pledged to heal the wounds left by 41 years of communist rule. Problems are so terrible that, uh, and so complex that uh, uh, probably our greatest problem will be patience. To, to deal with one thing at a time, to solve it, and then move on. The first unemployment in 40 years will emerge but if inefficient coal mines are closed. And the environment is such a disaster that acid rain has destroyed entire forests. Repairing the damage now falls on the shoulders of the Czech's new assembly. Among its members, a rock star who insists he and his reformist colleagues can make the radical decisions to build a new Czechoslovakia. But Romanians are not certain how to put into place their new proclaimed democracy. The New Year's street dance of the Bucharest Bears holds more tradition here than a liberal democracy, and it shows. Among a people used to being told what to do and how to think, propaganda and the silent press remain a part of life. But this new year, the first in nearly a quarter of a century without Ceausescu, dawned a few changes at least. Abolished are the secret police, the death penalty, and the mandatory six-day work week. Brenda, political history is made in this country as New York City's David Dinkins is sworn in as the first black mayor of the nation's largest city. A private swearing-in took place just as the new year began, a minute after midnight this morning. The public swearing-in was at noon today. On the steps of City Hall, the 62-year-old Dinkins shared his vision of New York. This administration will renew the quest for social justice. Whether the issue is education or affordable housing, the environment, health care, or consumer rights, the shame of homelessness, or the pain of AIDS. Dinkins calls his election victory a victory for all black Americans. The outdoor ceremony in New York City was attended by black notables, including Jesse Jackson, Harry Belafonte, and South African Bishop Desmond Tutu. Brenda? Tomorrow, former Mayor Maynard Jackson returns to his old job, taking the oath of office to become Atlanta's chief executive for the next four years. Jackson will be sworn in tomorrow evening in ceremonies at the Civic Center at 7 o'clock. 18 city council members and the city council president will also be sworn in at the very same ceremony. The new mayor is expected to issue some executive orders immediately after his inauguration. Today, the NAACP celebrated its annual Emancipation Day ceremonies under a cloud of caution. Security was tight as Atlanta police and the FBI guarded against terrorist threats aimed at the civil rights organization. While speaking at the Hoosier United Methodist Church, the president of the local chapter said the NAACP will not be intimidated by the recent threats. Blacks were 
lynched, killed, beaten, run out of town, their property was taken. As a result of this, people got together. And from that came the NAACP. Today marked the 127th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's proclamation, which freed the slaves back in 1863. There is much more to come on Eyewitness News at 11, including word that a lengthy and often violent coal strike may finally be drawing to an end. Searchers looking for three people who vanished on the T Chattahoochee hold out hope that the new year will bring some sign of them. And off the coast of Morocco, a ruptured supertanker threatens a sensitive coastline with millions of gallons of spilled oil. I hate diets, but I lost weight fast with Weight Watchers' new fast and flexible program. I hate starving myself, but now I don't have to. I can live the way I want, and in no time, here I am. Now there's only one thing I hate, not joining Weight Watchers sooner. Save 40%. Join now for only $15. Weight loss doesn't have to mean starvation, packages, or powders. Call Weight Watchers at 395-7820 or toll-free 1-800-282-4565. Happy New Year, Atlanta. I'm Tom Park here at Atlanta Toyota. Yes, we are open right now till midnight tonight. This is the final few hours of our giant tax sale. Now, if you've ever thought about buying a pickup truck, I want you to listen to me because we've got over 100 1990 model standard pickup trucks this evening at the same price, $74.88 or $99 down at $169 a month. Let me say that again. These are 1990s at $99 down at $169 a month till midnight this New Year's Day. Come see us at Atlanta Toyota. Cash or charge? We interrupt this purchase for a reminder. I've got to have it. There's still one more place to comparison shop. I don't know where to start. Here, by choosing the card that actually pays you cash. Cash back for every charge. The Discover card. Mom! Mom! That's the one. It's perfect. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. New Year's 1990 brings a tentative end to a bitter nine-month coal strike in three states. The United Mine Workers and the Pittston Coal Company finally settled a walkout that idled 1,700 workers and sparked wildcat strikes that spread to nearly a dozen states. The two sides met in Washington, where the settlement was toasted by Labor Secretary Elizabeth Dole and celebrated as a victory for everyone. Uh, I think it is a great settlement, not only good for the mine workers and Pittston, but good for the industry, good for collective bargaining, and yet good for the nation. The new tentative agreement restores Pittston's contributions to a health and benefits package for miners, a central issue in that strike. The miners will not return to work until the agreement is voted on over the next 10 days. In Pennsylvania, a barge loaded with 100,000 gallons of gasoline hits a bridge and ruptures. It happened on the ice-clogged Monongahela River. The barge is one of at least 50 to break loose from moorings along a 40-mile stretch of that river. State environmental crews are working to control the spill. Because only one compartment of the barge ruptured, that spill is confined to 10,000 gallons. A spill nearly 4,000 times as large as posing a serious threat to the Moroccan coastline. 37 million gallons of crude oil have leaked from a crippled Iranian supertanker. A 108-square-mile slick has now moved within 12 miles of the Moroccan coastline and could hit land by Wednesday. Thirteen days ago, an explosion tore through the supertanker and caused that huge spill. The tanker is being towed farther out to sea. A barrier is in place to try to keep the oil from reaching land. In Alabama, the search goes on tonight for three people who disappeared when their boat went over a dam in the Chattahoochee River. Today was the fourth day rescuers searched the waters looking for Columbus Man and his two teenage neighbors. The cold water has made it very difficult. We're having to keep the men down only for 12 to 15 minutes. That's about it because by 15 minutes we'll bring their body temperature and temperature down to about 94 degrees. The victims disappeared last week when the boat went over a small dam about 15 miles from West Point Lake. The rescuers are hoping to put an end to the anguish of family members. It makes me feel as if like it's my own person. I like to help people. And the quicker you can get them out, the better you can help the family. One person managed to survive the accident. He stayed on an island in the river, then recovered his boat to make it to shore. Among the stories when we come back, in France, eight works by Matisse, all of them irreplaceable, 
are stolen by a burglar with expensive tastes. Also ahead, find out why changes in the tax laws could hit you hard this year. How to get your package through a London fog. Pursuant to the revised Importation Act, we're going to require 1244B4. A714B4. Section 12151D. Triplicate. Triplicate. Document no one's more accustomed to overseas customs than Federal Express, which means your package gets there on time all the time, even through the densest London fog. Procedure, you know. Federal Express. The best way to ship it over here is now the best way to ship it over there. You know, a lot of photo processors often try to attract you with coupons. Well, they may give you a wonderful price, but they may also give you a print that looks like this. Eckerd doesn't think you should have to settle for bad prints to get a great price. That's why Eckerd will honor anyone else's coupon so you can get the best price on the best prints. Eckerd Photo Processing. This holiday, bring in anyone's coupon. I was feeling a little woozy back there. When the program stops and your television pops, you need Repair Central. When Junior spills his snack and your VCR is off track, you need Repair Central. When the camcorder breaks in the middle of your takes, you need Repair Central. When your stereo or CD player won't play, you need Repair Central. Service is our only business. Our professional staff repairs TVs, VCRs, stereos, microwaves, camcorders, and CD players. Lasting service and customer satisfaction is our only business. See the yellow pages for locations. In France, an art thief gets away with a multi-million dollar haul of paintings by Matisse. They were stolen from the apartment where Matisse lived before his death. French police say a burglar broke into this apartment in the city of Nice on the French Riviera. Five oil paintings, an engraving, and two pencil sketches were taken. The value of the stolen art is estimated at $12.5 million. The apartment was not occupied. It was not protected by a burglar alarm. Well, you can expect fewer dollars in your paycheck this week. A Social Security tax increase kicked in with this new year. America's more than 120 million workers will be seeing a bigger deduction out of FICO and their pay stubs. In addition, the tax rate will change. For people in the low-income range, say 20000 or below, the FICO tax is, is, is far greater than the income tax. Here's how it'll work. If you're making $20,000 or less, the increase is only $28, but the total tax is more than $1,500 for the year. Making more than $51,300, the hike is up by almost $320, with a year's total of nearly $4,000 in taxes. A higher rate is to pay for the time when the massive baby boomer generation retires. Before we move on here on Eyewitness News, we want to welcome a new member of our team sitting next to me, John Marler. It's very good to have you with us. It's great to be here, Brenda. It's great to be a part of this team. I hope the weather is suitable to you. It's <laughs> not a lot bad. Warmer. I like it a lot. John, welcome. Now, earlier you got out of me a TV5 thermometer, so I can't give you another <laughs> thermometer. So I'm going to give you a battery okay, and two Channel 5 pencils. All of these right? presents. And the meaning of the battery? I don't know, just keep yourself wired, <laughs> okay? <laughs> don't, let your, don't let your batteries run down. Stay okay. charged, nice all right? I can, I can figure out what the Nice to have you here okay. at Channel 5. Thank you. All right, the new year has begun. It's begun on a dry note. It's going to continue that way, it looks like, for another couple of days. But before this week is out, we can look for another one or two inches of rain as a very strong weather system comes in from the west. Here's a look now at what's going on in Atlanta tonight. That's right, John, at 11 o'clock tonight, partly cloudy. Fair skies, really. It's 36 degrees now, 59% humidity. North winds at 7 miles an hour and a rising barometer. The high today reached 46. The low was 33, so that made the day two below average. No rain fell today. Record high 75, but the record low is 7. Sunrise in the morning at 743 and down tomorrow at 541. I'm happy to see those sunsets getting a little later now. All right, let's check now, see what's going on around the rest of Georgia. Temperatures generally in the lower 30s across the northern part of the state, mid-30s through Macon, warming to about 40 at Albany and Brunswick. And elsewhere across the southeast, high pressure is still around the Memphis area, and it's going to drift over northern Georgia and northern Mississippi during the night and tomorrow. So the winds will be light, so we'll have an ideal radiational cooling night. I mean, light winds, clear skies, all that heat just goes out into space. Temperatures will drop into the 20s. But as the winds start going around along the Gulf Coast, those temperatures will be holding in the 40s. 
Now, starting earlier this morning through this afternoon, our frontal system now moves on away through Florida. In the meantime, there's a weak disturbance over the Texas area, which will increase the clouds there, bring them a little bit of light rain, but that's not the major weather system that's going to affect us about Thursday. This weather system is going to get kicked out. Some of the high clouds will drift on over us during the afternoon tomorrow. No rain to be expected from that. Really, the rain to be expected is from a strong system now bringing rain along the west coast, going to bring snow to the higher elevations. An increasingly strong system is going to be a significant weather system once it traverses most of the southern United States. Probably is going to take to about Thursday before it reaches here. In the meantime, lots of snow in the west, clouds increasing in the Texas area, partly cloudy conditions tomorrow just because of that weak disturbance approaching. And then temperatures, not cold anywhere in the country tomorrow for highs, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Basically, we've got a westerly flow across the country, so none of that cold Canadian Arctic air comes down. Pacific, milder air for this time of year continues, and that's going to be the rule for the rest of the week. So here's our forecast for Atlanta on a Sunday night. Starts out fair and cold, lows of 25 to 29 degrees, and light northwesterly winds. Tomorrow, a beautiful day, but with some high clouds. High temperatures, 47 to 52, and light winds as a high-pressure cell drifts over us. Now, as we go into the rest of the week, we'll see more clouds Wednesday afternoon as the temperatures climb into the 50s. Then Thursday, I would say a very good chance of rain then, maybe even heavy rain, 58 degrees. Clearing out as the front goes by on Friday and still fair to partly cloudy and a little cooler on Saturday. And that will round out your first week here at Channel 5. Yeah, just Sounds what, pretty good. What a big spender he is. You <laughs> yeah, know, the battery. To, to give you a 9-volt battery. Boy, <laughs> we shall not forget that one, You're Jim. welcome. <laughs> Turn our attention now to sports. It's the day for bowl games, a national championship at stake. Jeff, what's going on? Colorado right now in big-time trouble. Notre Dame. Too big, too strong, capitalizing on a lot of opportunities. We will have that story in the complete bowl roundup. So stay right here. When you taste Progresso, you know it. There's no soup quite like it. Progresso has that sunny Italian flavor, a special goodness all its own. There's no soup like Progresso. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Experience the action. Feel the emotion. See for yourself. The pictures of Eyewitness News. Dedicated. Determined. Dependable. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. What's a red sticker clearance? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's start with a $50 sweater. Guess Marshall's price. I would guess $29.99. Very good, but wait. With a Marshall's red sticker price, it's reduced to $20. That's a wonderful price. You can't beat it. Sure we can. Take an additional 25% off, and now you've got Marshall's red sticker clearance price. I love it. <laughs> Marshall's red sticker clearance, now through Tuesday. Fantastic! At Marshall's, the first name and brand names for less. <laughs> Jeff set the stage, a championship at stake. Let's get to the action. You know what? At this hour, it is looking like Miami Bay may, may be the next national champion. Colorado in trouble with Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. It was scoreless at half, but the Irish have come out rocking and rolling. Rahib the Rocket Ishmael. Look at him go. That makes it 14 to nothing. Right now, it is 14 to 6. Notre Dame in the fourth quarter. Colorado has had so many opportunities, they have not been able to capitalize. In the Sugar Bowl, Bill Curry's Crimson Tide trail in the fourth quarter, 26 to 17. Alex Johnson blows by the future Falcon, Keith McCants. It's 20 to 10 in the second quarter. Roll Tide, Craig Hollingsworth here to LeMond Russell. And right now, Miami has the lead 26-17. It's in the fourth quarter. Bo Schembechler's career at Michigan ends the way it went most of the years. West Coast, frustration in the Rose Bowl. 17-10, Southern California a winner today. Michigan tied the game at 10, and things were looking just fine for them. Here on the give, a look at him turn it up and in for six. Now, inside, two minutes to play. The game is all tied at 10. Ricky Irvins here, the give, turning it outside, 
breaking a few tackles, high stepping into the end zone. A USC beats Michigan and Beauchamp Beckler 17 10. Forget about the polls. The best college football team, Florida State. 41 10 over Nebraska at the Fiesta in Tempe. Peter Tom Willis, 422 yards in the air, five touchdowns. He was amazing. There to Dexter Carter. That made it 21 10. Tom Osborne had no clue all day how to deal with this potent passing attack. It is Willis into the end zone and F. FSU a 41 to 10 winner in that game. Now, if Florida State is the best, how about Auburn? They can't be that far behind. 31-14 past Ohio State. The Tigers offense too much today with Reggie Slack. It is the Hall of Fame bull. Ohio State dominating. The hit Zach Dumas makes on Stacy Danley. Danley from Atlanta and probably wondering where the heck he is from right now. John Cooper liking that, but Auburn got it together. Reggie Slack finding Greg Taylor. It is 17-14. Auburn with the lead in the third quarter for Pat Dye. But Slack continues to turn up the flame. There, the quarterback draw into the end zone, and Auburn passed Ohio State 31 to 14. Another strong SEC team. Tennessee edges Arkansas. Chuck Webb, 250 yards on 26 carries. That is a new Cotton Bowl record. The Volunteers are 11 and 1. Look at the move there. He cuts it up toward the end zone. The school wins their 600th game, Tennessee over Arkansas. The Citrus Bowl sees Illinois roll Virginia 31 21. Jeff George, splendid. 321 yards and three TDs. There to Steve Williams in the back of the end zone. This time, George looking for Bellamy. The straight drop back and finds him. Tough catch, tough pass, tough victory. The Illini over Virginia, 31 to 21. In Houston, head coach Jerry Glanville held a news conference to begin his 1990. A little bit unusual. It was simple. He's sort of like a gridiron Al Haig. Ladies and gentlemen, he is indeed in charge. Glanville says he'll be back for 1990. Uh, I, you know, I haven't talked to Mr. Adams, and we will talk in the near future, but uh, I never thought of uh, quitting anything in my life. Then if there is uh, such a lock that he's going to be back, why have an afternoon <laughs> news conference the day after losing in the AFC wild card game? I'll tell you what, if he doesn't make it in Houston, I think the Falcons will probably take a swing at Jerry Glanville, always one of the more interesting figures in the National Football League. And speaking of the Falcons, were we? We sort of were. Let's kind of lean into that. Falcons will interview Washington assistant head coach Joe Bugle which sounds kind of familiar because the last time the Falcons were looking for a head coach around 1983, they also were uh, going after a Washington assistant by the name of Dan Henning. So oftentimes, what changes oftentimes stays the same. Mm. And Jeff, you're oh, right, that so is pretty profound. tough to have to call a news conference to say that uh, you still have a job. Still have a job. <laughs> Just be counting down. All right, All right we'll thank see you. you later. So ahead on Eyewitness News tonight, the new year begins on a chilly note for some. We will have the cold facts just a moment. The Budget Gourmet comes in a plain cardboard box that you pop right in the microwave or oven. It costs about 40% less to manufacture than our competition's fancy packaging and saves us a bundle on production. And best of all, the money we take out of our box goes into our food. <laughs> Budget Gourmet, expensive food at reasonable prices. The party's not over yet. I've got a New Year's bash that's gonna be wild. Just watch. Help! Bring in the 90s with LA Law's Jimmy Smith. Then get ready to bust a move with Young MC. And keep it rocking with Ricky Lake from China Beach. This is the show. This is the crowd. On the next Arsenio Hall Show. Tonight at midnight on Channel 5. I'm a dental hygienist, and the other day the power went off right when I had a patient in the chair. The dentist was real worried that he was not going to get through with his patients, much less get to go eat lunch. He had the lights back on faster than it takes me to clean somebody's teeth. We all just started clapping. He took a bow. They began to clap and cheer from the porch, so I turned and gave him a bow from the bucket. Serving you with energy from the power of our pride. It was the quickest trip to the dentist I've ever had.
Channel 5 Eyewitness News. A common thread, whether told by a black executive or Professional. Tell the attacker entered his victim's home, and those who made something of themselves were there. Concern. It could have been another explosive to Cap County School, but everyone else in the city is called But just in the touch. general excitement of a newborn, plus to know the relationship. Channel 5 News anchor Brenda Wood. Dedicated. Determined. Dependable. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Finally tonight, when the temperature is 90 degrees, that of course is the time to take a cool dip. But when it is the middle of the winter and the temperature is in the 30s, well, that is quite another story. However, that didn't stop members of the Dolphin Club in San Francisco. The swimmers braved 50-degree water temperatures to plunge into the San Francisco Bay and swim to Alcatraz Island. 35 members took part in this chilly annual event. It was quite a different story in the Steel City, though. Members of the Polar Bear Club took their annual New Year's Day dip in the Monongahela River. The water temperature there dipped to a bone-chilling 27 degrees. Oh, yeah. It all began 40 years ago, and it has continued every New Year's Day. Not for me. No, not for me either. Those guys can have it. I'm still trying to figure out whether <laughs> Ken Cook has robbed his kids of a battery out of their Christmas toy or something. What's, what's with you in this? Never tell, but lumps of coal. <laughs> lumps of coal. And uh, so when Sam Wright doesn't even have any lead in this pencil, what have you been doing? And he didn't sharpen them, so I can't hurt myself. Keep that on your list, <laughs> would you? <laughs> that is it for Eyewitness News for this Monday, the first day of 1990. I hope it's been a terrific New Year's Day for you. For the news team, I'm Brenda Wood. And I'm John Marler. Thanks for joining us. Good night. If you have a news tip, dial Witness for Eyewitness News. In 1989, once again, the...